This video is for the 12-1 work together. So it says the October 15th time card for Alice R. Webster and time card data for other employees are provided. Calculate the regular, overtime, and total hours worked by Ms. Webster. Any hours over 8 hours per day or 40 hours per week are considered overtime. Each work week begins on Monday. Record the total hours on the time card. Round hours to the nearest quarter hour. Okay, so when we are looking at Monday for Alice, it looks like she clocked in. Remember, we're going to round, so we're going to say 8 a.m. and clocked out at noon, so that would be four hours there. She clocked back in at 1 and out at 5, so another four hours for a total of eight hours. Tuesday, clocked in at 8, clock out at noon, clock back in at 1, clock back out at 5, so another eight hours there. Wednesday. Clock in at 8, out at noon, back in at 1, out at 5. Another 8 hours there. Thursday, clock in at 8, clock out at noon, clock in at 1, clock out at 5. So here we're seeing those regular hours of 8. So I'm going to put in those regular hours of 8, but then we also see that she clocked back in in the evening at 6 and then back out at 9.30. So that would be three and a half hours of overtime. On Friday, we don't see that she clocked in in the morning at all. She clocked in in the afternoon at 1, left at 5, back in at 6, and out at 10. Now, normally, when we, or not normally, but when we look at this one, we use this one as overtime. However, when we look at her Friday hours, it was still 8 hours in the day. Even though um, it was in the evening that she worked, it was still an 8-hour day. So that will be regular and no overtime. Okay, Monday the 8th, in at 8, out at noon, in at 1, out at 5, another 8-hour day. Tuesday, in at 8, out at noon, in at 1, out at... Now, we don't want to miss this out at 6 o'clock because we've just been so used to her clocking in at 8, out at noon, in at 1, out at 5, but this one changes. She clocks out an hour later than normal. So here, that's still an eight-hour day, but that five to six would be an extra hour of overtime. So we do need to make sure that we're calculating that extra hour. Wednesday, eight to noon, one to five, eight hours. Thursday, eight to noon, one to five, eight hours. Friday, eight to one, two to five. So on this one, it's still eight hours. It just looks like she took her lunch at a later time. So still eight hours. And then we see that she came in on Saturday and she worked from 10 to one. So on this one, yes, it's not a 10 or not an eight hour day. However, she's already, when we look, she's already worked her eight hours on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's a full work week. So this time that she put in on Saturday is going to be three hours of overtime. Last one on Monday is eight to noon, one to four or one to five, sorry. And so eight hours there. Next thing that we're going to do then is we're going to add up all of our regular hours. So sometimes what's easier for me is to just count up how many days. Um, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 days of 8-hour days. So 8 times 11 is going to be 88 hours of regular. And then we have some overtime in there that we need to add up. So overtime, it looks like, is 7.5 hours. I'm going to grade step one. And next step. So here it says the time card data for Alice R. Webster and other employees are provided. Enter the regular and overtime hours for Miss Webster in the earnings schedule. For each employee, calculate the amount of regular, overtime, and total earnings. Overtime hours are paid at one and a half times the regular rate. Round dollar amounts to the nearest cent. 
Um, let's, I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fill in these regular and overtime for employee number four. So employee number four is Alice, what we just looked at um, in step number one. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of her time car, card. Her regular hours were 88 and her overtime hours were 7.5. Okay, then I'm going to, I'm going to figure out the regular um, earnings for all of them. Um, so to do that, I'm going to take the regular rate times the regular hours. So employee number one is 80 times 9 for $720. Employee number two is 80 times 12.5 for 1000 Employee number three, 70 times 9.75, 682.5, and then our last one is 88 times 11, and we get 968. Next, I'm going to figure out our overtime. Now, before I can figure out our overtime earnings, I need to figure out my overtime rate. It does tell me up here in the directions that the overtime hours are paid at one and a half times the regular rate. So first, I'm going to take $9 times 1.5. So employee number one for overtime is going to get paid $13.50 an hour. I'm then going to take that number times my overtime hours. So times five. So employee number one, 67.5. I'm going to do the same thing for employee number two. Their regular hourly wage is 12.5, but overtime is paid at one and a half times. So 12.5 times 1.5. And then I'm going to take that times the overtime hours, so times 3. And here I'm going to get 56.25. Now the next one, I'm not even going to figure out the overtime rate because there's no overtime hours, so this is simply going to be 0. For me, I always put the 0 in. If MindTab does not want the zero, it will just delete it and make it a blank. Okay, so I'm going to put the zero in, it deletes it, we're good to go. Last employee then, regular rate is 11, so times 1.5 is going to be 16.5 for overtime, times the overtime hours of 7.5, for overtime earnings, 123.75. Okay, last, one, last column then is I'm going to figure out the total earnings. So to figure out total earnings, I'm simply going to add regular plus overtime. So first one is 787.5, oops, 787.5. Next one, easy math, 1056.25. Employee 3 is simply 682.5. And our last one is going to be 1091.75. I'm going to grade my final step. And save and continue. You can now complete the 12-1 on your own.